So we've heard many discussions about the next standard in wireless, 5G. The only problem is the standard has not yet been established. Well, this isn't stopping Qualcomm. They're promising to launch the first 5G modem by 2018, running with the name Snapdragon X50. And it's no process that goes into that, that processor that goes into your smart home. The chip will get a peak download speeds of five gigabytes per second. Now let's talk frequency bands. Normally 5G carriers are running at a whole slew of them, 850, 700, 1700, 1900, 2500, all across the board megahertz wise. Qualcomm is trying to lock down the 800 megahertz on the 28 gigahertz millimeter wave spectrum. This is similar frequency that Samsung, Nokia, and Verizon are looking at as well. So the frequency standard is still almost up in the air at this point. Um, so Qualcomm is really early to the table. And there actually still looks at uh, 73 gigahertz being pushed as well. So cheaper. And this is something that manufacturers are going to need to handle it well. At the, those speeds, the compute powder alone and storage capability alone will, will need to be enhanced on mobile devices. So we're going to have to see a jump quite a bit in some devices as well as uh, efficiency and power consumption. Because I can't imagine these radios and, and these processors actually consuming less power. Yeah, to the, the 5G is going to need to be a really, really big change. The Previously, we had a lot of difference in processing power between a mobile platform and a desktop platform. And this is not going to be the same. You know, a Snapdragon is already a pretty beefy chip. And one thing that I should mention is, yeah, 73 gigahertz, 20 gigahertz, you know, when you start getting into the millimeter wave band area, um, getting blocked by plants, by buildings, by walls, all kinds of things is a very big issue. What I see this really being for are for um, the concept of femtocells or microcells. So if you're at home and you want to be able to go and stream things very quickly or you're in the office, I foresee um, the Qualcomm people working with the carriers to put in the same chip so you can handle the the aggregation of a tiny cell in maybe as small as a work group so that you can further detach. This is all that strategy, you know, wireless is just as good as wired. Yeah, ha, ha, sure. Um, now, one of the other things that could be really, really interesting is Qualcomm bought a corporation called Digital Fountain quite a while ago. And it is the technology that James Cameron used to move the dailies around in Avatar. Really, really big 4K um, streams that he had to go and send from the studios over to the production houses. So what Digital Fountain did, uh, Kurt Franklin and I did some testing probably a decade ago. And we actually, I think we started with a 10 or 15 terabyte file and stream, you know, sent it from Honolulu to Gainesville. And when we did the testing and so forth over several iterations, we were getting a tenfold to a 15-fold increase in throughput. And the way digital fountains do that is they channelize the data into lots of little channels. And if you have a reliable connection, it will purposely drop channels out and mathematically recreate them at the far side. So it does require a lot of computing power. And this is something that really appeals to the uh, Qualcomm people because they're in the business of selling really, really heavy duty mobile um, CPUs. And they're pushing harder and harder to change the mobile platform and make the gray line between a mobile and a desktop further blurry. And so there's going to be a lot of changes. Um, 5G, like Lou said, isn't ratified yet. But in this case, what Qualcomm's trying to do is they're trying to push their standard by saying, hey, looky, looky, we've got this system already ready to go. Why don't you adopt our system? Because we are not AT&T, we are not Verizon, we are not T-Mobile. We provide the plumbing for you guys to run on. We have better plumbing. So, Lou, this is something that ought to be really interesting, especially as, you know, Apple loves bigger and bigger CPUs, but they don't necessarily like Snapdragon, uh, the Qualcomm chips. So this is going to be really interesting, especially since Qualcomm has been very, very strong in the Android world. Um, and 5G is this, I, I question though, whether or not this is one of those, if we build it, will they come 
um, type of things. Uh, who, what do you think? Yeah, I think that this is interesting because I think you bring up a good point as well because, you know, that's such a high frequency and as well as at such a high com- uh, power consumption rate. You, you, you talk about attenuation and how the, you know, the frequency and, the, and the actually the signal can drop very quickly, especially at that high. So it's going to be a, it's going to be difficult for them, I think, to get this adapted, even even in scenarios that you're talking about with Digital Fountain. I mean, I think some scenarios could be that maybe we start to collect higher data streams from IoT devices using this, where it's just a short term ranged device that's collecting data from the crowd and then data mining that data. The problem is, though, those IoT devices are going to be need to be beefed up. Um, they're going to have to have better batteries. They're going to have to have, you know, especially if they're wireless connectivity. Um, I think there's there's going to be problems because, again, you know, attenuation, attenuation is going to be a difficulty. It can't go through walls very easily. Uh, I mean, it can go through walls, but it can go very you know, short distances. So I think that this is there's going to be quite a lot of problems, I think, going forward. That a lot of humps they're going to have to jump over. So I think this is a, just a almost a marketing ploy to say, hey, I'm getting to the table first. Let's hope the market follows um, and we, I don't think we're going to see the light of this, the light of day of this chip even adapted very soon, very, uh, uh right away. I think it's going to be quite a bit of time, uh, before we get there. So this should be interesting how this all kind of plays out. 